What's up, YouTube? The doctor is in. Uh, today, I am going to be going through the DNF Dual tutorial to learn all about the mana system and everything that goes along with it because I was not one of the lucky few that got to take part in the betas earlier in the year. So let's just hop right into it because there is a decent amount of information to learn here. Um, I, am, I am an Inquisitor player, so we're just going to see how that goes. Yeah, so hopefully this is quick. Um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of this stuff will be like old hat to, to traditional fighting game players who've played pretty much any game, but especially Grand Blue, because that's what a lot of people are saying this game plays like or very similar to. Um, but for somebody that didn't play Grand Blue at, a, at an exceptional level, um, oh, this one's literally just read the game rules. Um, yeah, I think we can... Oh, wait. I don't know what that is. Go back. Uh, start of each match, the player that controls the character on the left side. All right, that makes sense. Okay. Nope, I went back too far. Matches are carried out in rounds. The activated marks below the character illustrations represent the number of rounds necessary to win the match. Oh, cool. So you can send that all the way up to five. Like, you could literally do a first to five in-game. That's sick too. That oh, that's actually crazy because that on top of the, my Twitter video about having the adjustable gauges, that's actually super cool. Uh, once activated, uh, one activated mark will be filled when a round is won. To all the marks wins. All right, cool. We like that. Like that. Yellow is health. All right, makes sense. Time runs out. Okay. We'll count as both players winning a round. Okay. All right, and you get one overtime if you double, if you double KO, uh, and you both need to one more round to win. So if it's final round and you double KO, you do one overtime round. And if that ties, then it's just a tie. I, do any other fighting games do that? I don't think they do. At least I haven't heard of one. Let me know down, let me know down in the chat if there is, or in the comments, excuse me, uh, if there are fighting games that operate like that, because that, that's new for me. Uh, the blue gauge underneath the health gauge is your mana gauge, your mana point gauge. Uh, Consumed when your special moves are used, or your, your yeah MP skills, uh, and the lower health you get, the higher the gauge goes. All right. Upon using an MP skill that requires more MP than you have, exhaustion will be displayed over the MP gauge, and you will not be able to use MP skills until overconsumed MP is recovered. Okay. So if you're at 50 and you use 75. You have to wait for 25 to recover before the bar even goes back up. That makes sense. Like that, that makes sense. That, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, round gauge shown on either side is the guard gauge. Guarding will reduce it and will recover when you're not guarding. Seems pretty straightforward. Once it reaches zero, our guard break will be active, which is just a, a traditional guard break, it seems like. Um, the same as with every other fighting game that has guard breaks. All right. So... First tutorial, done. Next tutorial. <laughs> and I, I know that this seems super basic for some people, but good tutorials are hard to come by in all video games. So if you actually get a tutorial that like helps people get better, that's a good tutorial. Like, And the simplest of things sometimes need to be broken down because not everything is super intuitive. So, we're heading into the tutorial 2. Start learning about basic movement. Uh, sometimes used to assume a position to carry out an attack, and other times evade an opponent's attack. Movement is fundamental to both offense and defense. Complete all actions according to the action guide. Okay. The left and right commands will refer to your character's position. Tutorial explanations will be based on the premise that your character is facing towards the right. So, pretty much everything that like you do in like combo... Uh, emulators and things like that will assume that you're player one side um, which kind of just makes sense 
it then does put the onus on you to like if you want to practice it on player two side y you have to like do that so if it's like if you've run into a combo you might have to like either jump behind your opponent the, the dummy or like back throw them um because most of these things are designed to show you as the player one character okay so we got our walk speed just left right left right crouch dash forward so you just double tap basically you just double tap the direction you want to go and that's the direction you you dash and then you jump forward jump back jump forward jump back jump uh, nope There it is. Three down. So offense basics. You hit your opponent with each of your attacks to memorize attack commands. Attack actions have a different speed, area effect, and amount of damage. So this is what you would traditionally hear is like light punch, medium punch, heavy punch, light kick, heavy kick, uh, medium kick, or like um, or like in Guilty Gear, right? It's punch, kick, slash, close slash, far slash, heavy slash. Like each move has its own different startup, active, and recovery. Um, and that's exactly what this is meaning by that. So by utilizing different attacks, depending on the situation to pressure your opponent, such as using fast attacks when an opponent is nearby or using long range attacks when an opponent is far away. So if your opponent it knocks you down and they're trying to just get on top of you and really press, press the issue, like, you want the quicker attack to try and force them away. So you would be using something like a punch, a light, like a light punch in Street Fighter, um, or in this game, it is going to be um, the standing A, right? So if we do A, A, I was too far away. So I'd have to get closer because it's a safe, fast attack. So once you get closer, you can, you can double tap your A button, which you can set it up to be whatever you want in the controls. So you get both. And then for standing B, you can see that it's a bit further away. And it's a bit slower too. So you're gonna have to be more cognizant of when you push that button, because it is slower. So a crouching A, so you hold down, crouch. Super quick button. And then you have your crouching B. Notice how the hit comes much later in the animation. There's a lot of time where you're just back turned. That that is going to be something that you're not going to want to do right here because your opponent's going to be able to hit you super quick. And we have our jump attacks. Jump A. For Inquisitor, it's an up sweep. This this would probably be a really good um, air to air button. So if you jump at the same time your opponent, you can catch him. Jumping B swipes downward, so this will be good if you can catch your opponent crouching a lot. It's still fairly quick. It's definitely slower than the, the jumping A, but it still, still gets the job done. Uh, and it looks like we're moving on to what they were talking about earlier with the MP gauge, with the skills. So that was an MP skill, actually. I skipped the letter. I, I skipped B. Um, or the regular skills. So that's just... That's five... Um, I actually don't know what the nomenclature is for that. Because it's using, like... It's using Xbox notation because I'm on Steam. Um, but, like... I don't know particularly what the correlation is but so um, you can see down in the bottom it says this attack has various properties depending on the character so every character is going to have a different set of skills the attack will change in combination with the directional buttons so that means that uh, you can hold down and hit your skill button and that's very different than that you can hold forward in skill and you get a, you get a dash or a roll through I think for some characters if you hold back it's another special skill. And then up, you get, a, you get a completely different air normal. 
or air, air attack. And it's the same thing with your MP skills. Hold forward, dash forward and swipe him in the air. Hold back, Inquisitor summons a, a, a Ferris wheel of flames. That's insane, that's so sick. If you hold down and hit your MP skills, that's your reversal button. That's something that if you get knocked down and you just really want to force your opponent away, that's that's what you're gonna try and get. It's super, super unsafe if they block it. You will get punished, so just be a little careful about when you choose to use that button. And then up, mana skill. And again, all of these are gonna be different per character. So once you find the character you like, you're gonna have to figure out what each of the skills and MP skills actually do for your character. Um, and then for just the standard grab, it's gonna be that standing A and standing B buttons pressed at the same time. Um, and if you hold backwards at the same time, you'll do a back throw and you'll be able to put your opponent either closer to the corner like that and then you can keep the pressure going or you can throw them back towards mid screen. So let's move on to the next one. That's tutorial two. So now we're going to learn a little bit about defense. You can't always just be on the offense pressing buttons and doing whatever you want to do. There is going to be a time where your opponent's going to get a turn. It's not a one player game. So this game does have a dedicated guard button. Um, it was very uh, useful in uh, Grand Blue Versus. There were a lot of use cases for it, just more so than blocking. Um, I, I don't know if it's as useful in this game. It is day one. I'm sure people will figure things out, so just give it some time. But you can guard by holding the right trigger. Again, it, it's going off the Xbox um, controller, the Xbox controller input um, on on the Empress, it is this button right here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's it's this one. It's the second to last one on the bottom row. Um, so, guarding with the directional buttons allows you to attack immediately while holding that uh, directional button, but requires you to change left to right inputs depending on your character's direction. So, you can block just by holding backwards, like in all fighting games. It's just that in situations where you might get uh, in trouble by your opponent doing some some fancy banks, uh, the the guard button comes in big handy. So you can guard with the directional buttons by holding left or right depending on the opposite of your opponent. So like in this standing situation right here, I would hold to the left to block my opponent. Whereas if they were to get to the other side, I would have to swap and hold to the right. Um, there is the guaranteed guard button that you can hold. So right here, I'm just holding it. You can see that the character animation has changed and then you can also crouch and the animation changes once again and This is the standard crouch This is crouch guard So you can also dodge by while walking forward pressing The, the guard button so You can as long as you press towards your opponent Get that nice little dash. It looks like I'm timing it right that I can dodge the jab there from Striker. I get hit a little bit, but the idea is there. So now this is the last bit of this tutorial. It is the awakening. When your character's HP falls below 30%, their awakening effect will be activated, allowing you to use their awakening skill. The Awakening skill is your trump card, capable of turning a game around in a single move. It can inflict great damage on your opponent, and it will use it, but, excuse me, but using it will deactivate your Awakening, and you will need to learn when and how to use it effectively. So this seems like it's very similar to the fading, Fatal Blow in the Mortal Kombat series. Once your health bar gets low enough, you unlock your special finisher. And so you're, right now, my character is set to Awakened. You can see how far down my health bar is. I tapped on the screen. Like you can see what I'm talking about. Um, it is very low. So once you get in there, you're gonna hit the left trigger. You get the animation and this 
is why I picked Inquisitor. This is the coolest thing ever. Bah! Flame Tower, it's so cool. It is so sick. I'm so happy that that's in the game. And that, that was tutorial two. Fully finished tutorial two, finally made it all the way through. And so now we're gonna be able to head into the road head into the HP and mana portion. So we learned earlier that the mana portion is what allows you to use those MP skills. Um, and it is gonna be interesting because as lo the lower your health gets, the higher your MP gauge gets. So we'll see how that plays out. Depending on the type of attack landed, it will inflict white damage or red damage. White damage is gradually recovered over time by not being hit and by not guarding. So you're gonna have to dodge your opponents to get that back. Red damage, however, does not come back. That is permanent. By successfully landing a standard attack A, standard attack B, a standard grab, skill, or guard cancel, the damage inflicted will partially be white. However, when guarded, no damage will be inflicted. All right, so there's no chip, it sounds like. So you can just block forever until your opponent either throws you or hits you with something you weren't expecting. So that's... Interesting. I know that some other games have done that, but people seem to really love chip kills. People are very excited that that's coming back into Street Fighter uh, 6. So, who knows? Only red damage will be inflicted upon successfully landing MP skills and awakening skills, and all white damage will be converted to red. So that's a very useful thing to know. It means that if you can end your combos with an MP skill, all of that damage you did previously is permanent now. So if you did a whole string of white damage and you were able to end it in an MP skill, that's all red. None of that is coming back. And it, they even gave it a special name. It's white damage loss. Furthermore, a small amount of white damage will be inflicted by MP skills even if they are guarded effectively. Okay, so this is chip. This is what I meant by chip. If you're able to land your MP skill, or what would uh, probably be called a special move in some other titles, then you do gain uh, chip damage against your opponent. You cannot chip kill with that, however. So that's, that's good. That means that if you are blocking and you're on a pixel HP, your opponent can't just spam out MP skills to try and finish you off. They have to actually work for it and get the hit. When white damage is depleted, an alert will be displayed. Critical hit, meter depleted. It is displayed in order of critical hit, brutal hit, fatal hit. Okay. And that shows you how much white damage was depleted. I want to know what the values of that are, because every character has a different health value to a degree. So I, that'll probably be different per character, I imagine. I, I think... I'll be curious to see if that's actually true or if there's just like a flat amount of damage that like triggers each, right? Like if it's, let me, let me see if I can go back. So if like 100 damage is a critical hit, 200 is brutal hit, or 300 is fatal hit, like if it's like that, then that's still useful information to have. It, it lets you mentally gauge how much damage your combo is doing uh, without um, like having to remember from training mode. Like, if you he see Fatal Hit and you're like, all right, my combo did, you know, 300-ish damage, then you can, you know, plan ahead and try and make sure that you can you can get the final, the final blow. Actively depleting your opponent's white health and hindering them from recovering is crucial. Try attacking with MP moves. So that's, yeah, that kind of makes sense. So deplete the opponent's white damage. We have to use a skill. I think this is one of the coolest skills in the game. I don't think that's what they wanted me to do. So we'll do that and then a skill. There we go. So this tutorial wanted you to inflict white damage and then deplete it. And that's th <laughs> that was the whole tutorial. <laughs> it was literally just do damage. <laughs> Alright, this this is where this is where like my knowledge of the game is like where I'm learning now because like I said, I didn't play the betas. I don't, I don't know everything about the mana system. So using MP skills consumes a set amount of MP for each move, and it can be recovered in three ways. Just by existing 
landing attack that does not have consumption. So if you're landing like a standing A, a standing B, a, a standard throw, then you'll get uh, you'll get mana back. And using conversion, which will be explained later, they say, hmm, whatever could that be? MP skills can be used as long as there's a small quantity of MP remaining. However, the consumed MP exceeds that of the remaining MP exhaustion will be displayed. So they said this earlier in the tutorial, um, and we kind of talked about that a little bit, and you won't be able to use any MP moves until the depleted is recovered. So it's like, if you go over by 25, you have to wait for the 25 to be recovered, whether that's by time passing, getting standard hits, or um, using conversion, which we don't know what that is yet. This state renders you dangerously vulnerable by limiting your options for offense and defense. Try experiencing it for yourself by using MP skills continuously. So let's do, let's summon our pinwheel and we'll do that. So I'm in the exhaustion state and I can't, I'm, I'm mashing that button. It doesn't let me do anything. It does come back eventually though. So you can just hang out and hopefully not, not get uh, crushed. The delay until MP recovery after an MP skill differs depending on each move. And then some MP skills can be active by pressing the move button after inputting the directional buttons in a specific, specific order. So this is, again, very similar to Grand Blue because Grand Blue had the special moves. They had the modern input, I'm gonna call it. And then they also had the technical input, which is what they're calling it here. And so what you can do and they'll, you can see it here on the left side of your screen. And I'll, I'll get into it in a second. Um, so a technical input was what they're describing is when you do the uh, traditional input and get a bonus out of it. Uh, when you succeed, green is just meaning that you did it, basically. So you were able to fully input what was asked of you. Blue means that it was precise, which means it was within a certain number of frames that the devs decided they wanted it to be. Uh, this will allow you to use, utilize MP efficiently, so practice inputting the command successfully. Um, so on the left side of the screen here, um, you can see that they have the modern input, so you would have forward A is that. But then you also have the traditional input, which is quarter circle forward A, or otherwise known as 236A. Um, if you were gonna use uh, the same nomenclature that a lot of anime games use. That wasn't what I wanted, I wanted this. Um, and then on the other side, you have holding backwards an A. That's the pinwheel. Or you can do quarter circle back or 214. So I only got green there, which means it wasn't a precise input. So that would be something I can practice on. By continuing to try it, that time you saw it was blue. That means I was more precise on my input and my timing, and so I get a little bit more efficient mana recovery by that. Um, and then we have the, uh, the Z motion. That would be the um, six, two, three input. Um, and that, see, that time I, I messed it up. But it's the same as if you were to hold down and hit your, your MP skill button. But again, by go doing it that way, you're less efficient with your mana recovery. So it is 100% worthwhile to put in a little bit extra effort and get get that input. All right. Conversion. This is something that they just told us they were going to be teaching us about a little bit later. So by pressing Y and B, which are the, the Xbox inputs, uh, when you have white damage remaining on your HP, this depletes the white damage and results in a small amount of red damage. So you are actively sacrificing your hit points to restore mana points when activated. The amount of MP recovered depends on the amount of white damage depleted. So you could, you could really juice up your MP gauge with this, um, if you if you wanted to, but you, again, that that trade-off is a lot of recoverable HP because the white, if you just can not get hit and not get put into block stun and be forced to guard, then it comes back. So it's 
it is something that you will have to learn how to use effectively. So the YB is going to be uh, the standard B. Right, well, it's... So it would be, if you wanted to do the actual input and not use the macro, um, it would be standard B and then the regular skill button at the same time. There is a macro for it that you can just hit the one button and it activates both as required. Um, and you can take advantage of that. And that might be quicker. Um, well, I mean, it is obviously quicker because you're hitting one button versus two. Um, but being able to use that in a combo and gain the necessary MP gauge back to potentially finish with an MP skill, cheating out the rest of your opponent's white health, that is, that's going to be game changing for depending on your character. All right, so we're talking about the different guards now. Um, so we, we showed the guard button earlier, and I showed you the stand blocking and the guard blocking. They do have important necessary differences. Um, some attacks cannot be guarded while standing or crouching because some attacks require them to be standing in case of a mid-level attack or a uh, jump attack would have required you to be standing to be blocked, whereas getting hit low would require a crouch block. Attacks that cannot be guarded while standing are often aimed at the feet, hence the low. Attacks that cannot be guarded while crouching can only be used while airborne, the jumping attacks. Uh, you must switch between standing and guarding and able to defend effectively against your opponents because they are trying to get you to pick the wrong option. And the only attacks that cannot be guarded while crouching guarding are the ones used during a jump or while airborne. Um, and if your opponent changes to an aerial position while you're crouch guarding, switch to a standing guard. So that makes sense. So let's see, use, oh, so I blocked low, and I blocked high. I was able to block low. Oh, block, low, block. Oh, she only does one high, okay. But so she's hit, aiming at my feet, I block low. And so I'm doing that by holding the um, back button, but you can also just as effectively use the macro button for guard. So we learned about the guard gauge earlier, which is right next to the time clock, in, in, in between the time clock and your health bar, um, and the guard break. Guarding reduces damage, but in doing so, consumes the guard gauge at the top of the screen. And the guard gauge recovers over time, but will cause guard break when reaching zero. So if you can attack your opponent until it's zero, then you can guard break them. So for the purpose of the tutorial, they gave them a very low guard uh, amount. So let's do a down skill. Dash through. Hit the wrong button. That's a standard B and a standard A. So I just hit a ton of buttons. Guard cancel. Um, it is a tool that is utilized in a few games. Um, and it is great for changing up the way you uh, present your defense. Right now, uh, the way it operates is you can exchange a 100 MP gauge to counterattack and turn this situation. Keep in mind that unlike other MP skills, this cannot be executed when you do not have at least 100. So you can't go into exhaustion for guard cancel. You have to already be there. Um, and it cannot be used to kill your opponent. That, it doesn't go without saying, because it, it, again, it's one of those things that, unless you know, might not make sense. But yeah, it, it's great that they're giving you this information in this easily digestible text form. Um, so let's let's give it a shot. I, uh, I did it wrong. So once you block, so while while holding down back, after the hit connects, you have to very quickly push forward and use that same button, that same macro that you were using to do conversion. And you see, it launches them flying backwards. Uh, if you're a Street Fighter player, this would be, this is V-reversal, is what it is. It's exactly what it is. It's the same input, effectively. So, very familiar use case there. So, 
you do just use it to get your opponent off of you. Um, we learned about grabs earlier. It's the um, it is the standard A, standard B input at the same time. Uh, there is the defensive mechanic where if you do it at the same time of your opponent, you tech the grab and you don't get thrown. Um, so grab moves are capable of ignoring your guard to inflict damage. You can either jump over them by using the air to escape, or you can tech grab it to just simply negate them and push your opponent back. And so this tutorial is asking me to tech, which is not... <laughs> It is not one of my greatest abilities, mostly because I don't know when to do it. But in the, the sense of the tutorial, they make it pretty clear when they're going to go for the grab. So it's just learning how to time it right. And it, that's one of those things that you need to know your opponent's game plan. You need to know when they're going to throw and why they're going to throw. So we're heading on to the next tutorial. Canceling and combos. Um, so we'll see what they have going for combos here. Um, these probably aren't optimal, so if you are running through the tutorial, they're a great introduction to how the game operates and how you can link together different attacks. Um, but if you wanted to take it a step further and learn more, um, there are you know uh, tools online, whether it's searching up YouTube guides um, or finding forums and things like that, where you can then learn more optimal routes or even just following um, the player content creators who are constantly putting the combos out onto Twitter. You can find the, um, the hashtag for your character and by clicking on that, you'll get a whole listing of things people are tweeting about that character in regards to combos and other little bits of information. Um, so we're also learning about canceling. Limiting the opening between moves and repeating the next action is called a cancel. Utilizing cancels to inflict damage in quick succession on opponents that cannot move being hit is called a combo. So you're effectively canceling one move into the next move by quickly hitting the button. Um, and that's for Inquisitor at least, the standing A, or the, the five A. Uh, becoming skilled in performing cancels and combos to inflict large amounts of damage on your opponent. Da da da. These all are dependent on the character. No, I'm not going to say no combo will be the same on every single character because there are games where you can do very simple combos that are similar across the entire cast of playable characters. Um, but So they're just going to start us off with easy combos. So we have 5A, 5A, 5B into uh, 5 skill. Um, so we got... So I missed the timing on my 5B, so it didn't it didn't cancel and it didn't link. That time, I was able to hit the button quicker, and so it was able to cancel the ending of the second 5A into the 5B, and then the skill had enough time to come through after that. So it's congratulating me for hitting the combo. Love that feeling. Gets the dopamine going. Aside from that, what was just introduced, each character's own special combo moves are explained in basic combos. Practice combos to reach the character's full potential. So that's just going to be that tutorial. Super, super, super simplified. When you look at the tutorial screen, there are going to be that sections of game mechanics and character combos. And so those are going to be very different things because this is literally teaching us the basics, the basics, basics, basics of the game. But you cannot move on to the harder stuff without a very solid foundation because if you're trying to learn combos but you don't even know how to move your character you skipped that step and it's gonna show so things like this are super important to make sure that you at least know about because then you can start working towards improving them running kite yeah let me let me finish this up kite and then we'll play all right sounds good give me however long this takes uh, so this is the system alerts. This is what they were talking about earlier, where you have the uh, the fatal combo and things like that, where it's just letting you know bits of information that you can then use to, you know, change up your game plan. When certain conditions are met during the match, system alerts will be displayed on either side of the screen. It's going to be things like first hit or counter hit, 
things like that. And so knowing exactly what these means will allow you to properly understand what's going on during the match. So a counter hit. When your opponent starts a, starts a hit, but you beat them to it, the system will let you know that you countered their attack and it increases the amount that they're hit stunned or that they're unable to move because you hit them. So that makes it a lot easier to get a combo going. And so when you hear people talk about whiff punishing and things like that, it's because they want the counter hit to then be able to go into a longer combo. The punish, shown on the attacker side when an attack hits during the immobile recovery time of an attack. Punish has no special effect, but it's just gonna let you know why the attack hit. A ground hit attack. So some games allow you to attack your opponent while they're on the ground. Not all games do, this game definitely does. If you've seen some of the combo routes that are out there, they're insane and you get so much off of those on the ground hits or OTGs as you may hear commentators and other players call them. So the ground attack is shown on the attacker side when a downed character is hit by the attack. So if I were to knock you down, and then hit your character, it would show up on my side of the screen. And although characters are able to tech automatically after getting knocked down, getting hit by an unteckable move will render them down to unable to perform any actions for a set duration. So in other games, this would be considered something like a hard knockdown. Like if you were to play Dragon Ball and you got hit by a level three super, I think there are some other moves. Kite in the chat would be a better resource to find out exactly how many hard knockdowns there are in Dragon Ball, but at the very least, a level three super in that game does give you the hard knockdown, and it guarantees you that your opponent is going to get up at a certain time. And so that's what they're talking about here by the unteckable move, rendering them downed. Most attacks won't hit a downed opponent, they say, using some limited attacks to punish further opponents. And I'm sure that'll be character dependent as well. Um, some of the longer buttoned characters, or longer weaponed characters, excuse me, seem to be doing really good about it. And Grappler has some really neat on the ground combos. Everybody remembers the infinite from beta two. Thankfully that's gone. And then a reversal. So when I told you earlier about how if you use the down MP skill, that is a reversal. When an attack or counter is performed as soon as an attack hits or a mobility is lifted, this will be shown on the performer side. So if you were trying to hit me as I stood up and I did my down MP, then it would be considered a reversal. And it just lets you know that you were able to cancel out your opponent's attack. Guard cancel and conversion will be shown on the side that uses either a guard cancel or conversion, whichever. And that tutorial was just learning how to read. Uh, so I think this is, I think that's the end of the actual, yes. So that is the end of the actual tutorial. Um, actually, it's not because Inquis Inquisitor has special abilities. Every character is going to have their own unique set of skills. And so we'll, we'll go through Inquisitors real quick, just because it is part of that first set of tutorials. Um, so try out all of Inquisitor's skills. Uh, punishment is an airborne attack that has a large hitbox, cannot be guarded while crouching, and it's hard to punish even upon guarding, which means that it probably has plus frames. Um, and it'll let you just take your turn. Cut in dash is a mobility move that allows you to dash forward quickly while evading your opponent's attacks. So that was what they showed us earlier by holding forward and pressing, um, well, they did it with the guard button. This will be something different. This is an Inquisitor special. Use it along with its string attack to close the gap with your opponent while attacking. It will leave you vulnerable upon being blocked, which means that it has negative frame advantage. Um, so you want to use it when you know you can get away with it. So we'll just run through. So we have the five skill, the two skill, the six skill, which is the dash. And then after the after you do the dash, if you hit the skill button one more time, you get that rising uppercut move. Holding back in skill throws out a little potion that puts a debuff on your opponent. And then here's that, that punishment move that they were talking about that is really good in the air. 
And then, Inquisitor can also dive down at your opponent after you jump in the air by holding down skill. So that was just the skills. This is the MP skills. So these are the things that you have to keep a focus on for your um, MP gauge. This is going to be the important one. So Burning Whale, that big, big circle, summons a wheel that immobilizes your opponent for a long duration. And you can move freely after activating it, which means you can then go on to set up what your next game plan is going to be. Or if they get hit by it, you can keep hitting them while they're being spun around. And then God's Wrath is a move that slashes at your surroundings while airborne. So you're like a giant helicopter. And it can cover a large area both in the air and on the ground. And is hard to counterattack even after being guarded. This makes good pressure or an offensive starting move. So in the tutorial, they basically give you unlimited MP gauge. Just so that you can get through all of the MP skills without actually having to wait for it to refill. So just her standard 5 MP, is it throws out a little firebomb there and it lets you try and lock the opponent down. Holding down MP skill, it is gonna be that reversal that we were just talking about. Forward MP, it's a little bit more of a dash. I'll be interested to see, I think that's gonna be a really good combo extender once you can get things going because it's a good finisher. It does pretty good damage, especially with just the modern input. Um, and again, MP skills always get rid of any white life on the board. So you definitely want to be able to finish something with that. This is the burning wheel they, they said. So as you can see, I'm able to move around. If I, if I do it again, I can, still, I can still throw abilities, right? So if I do this into the tonic, that gives me even more damage. And then we're going to do the, the giant spinning move, the helicopter there. Or it's not a Beyblade. That, that's on the ground. That's special. But that is a good approach option. And this is what I just mentioned. When you throw the Holy Water or whatever it is and then hit them with your MP skill, is it's the Incinerate passive. Lastly, we're learning about it. Hit an opponent with the Fleeg's Essence to inflict Essence on them for a set duration. An attacking opponents inflicted with essence with the MP skills launches them high and inflicts incinerate. Opponents afflicted with incinerate will have their HP reduced over time and practice. And we're just going to practice in, in doing that. So it is going to be um, from player one side. It is going to be four skill, and then you can just do whatever. So I just I just did the six MP or the the, the four MP. Excuse me. And you'll notice the difference. If you don't have the essence, they stay on the ground. And they get popped up afterwards, sure. But if you do it with the essence, they start in the sky. And they stay up in there. I hit a wrong button. It, there is going to be ways to combo off that, I guarantee you. But that is the second to last one. And then we have the awakening effect. So this is like the the bonus passive once you get into that awakening. We might have saw the awakening special earlier. This is an additional passive. So for Inquisitor specifically, when she gets down to the awakening effect, it reduces the delay between using an MP skill and MP recovery, which allows for easier MP management, and you can just keep pressing the pace. So we're just reading about it. That's the end of that one. And then the Awakening skill is Blazing Hell. We've already seen it once. We're going to see it again because it is awesome. There it is. Pillar of Flame with all the chains. Bah! So cool. It's so cool. And that's the end of the Inquisitor tutorial. Hopefully, you guys found that helpful in some way. I know I said it a couple times that if you've played fighting games before, a lot of these things might be redundant. But for those of you who are just learning, if this is your first fighting game, if you're coming from Dungeon Fighter Online or something like that, like this is super important information and it's built right into the game. You don't have to go searching for other YouTube videos. You can just boot up the game, run through the tutorial, and get the very basics you need to do to play the game at and just have fun with it. There are, as we, you know, we go back to the tutorial menu, there are 
more tutorials. There's basic Inquisitor combos, and then there are challenge combos as well. So once you get those basics down, you can move on, and there is a path line of information to be had that you can just use to keep getting better and better and better. And that's for every character. I just did Inquisitor because that's who I'm gonna play. If you find another character super interesting, be sure to click on them and go through everything that they have available and then find out your local, you know, content creator who is playing that character and learn from them, ask them questions, things like that. If you have any questions for me, let me know down in the comments. If I don't have an answer for you, I'll find it for you and we will get better together. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe. Be sure to hit that like button and I will see you in the next video.